Hi. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to create a simple application using the FireMonkey TWO data grid from InfoPower. Now, in this example, we're going to use an in-memory table um, through the T client data set. So let's begin this application. The new FireMonkey desktop application. And now we have a new form. We're going to first drop in a T client data set. And this is going to contain all our information that we're going to manage. Um, and then we're going to tie this to the grid. So what we need to do now first is we need to create the fields that are going to be associated with this client data set. And in our example, we're going to create two fields. The first one is going to be an ID field. And we'll call that a auto increment field. So it'll be managed automatically by the engine. Second field, we'll call it a name field. And that one, we want to make it a data type of string. And it has a size of 20 at the default. We'll leave it at that. That's fine. So now we've already have a data set, but we don't really, it doesn't exist yet until we create it. So after we, after we define the fields, we have to say create. And now it's actually, it does exist. And one more thing we need to do is we need to create a bind source because the power components require a bind source. They don't attach to the data set, they attach to a bind source. So now that that is done, let's drop in the data grid. Data grid, we will attach that to this bind source we just dropped in. And there's two ways we can do that. We could do that through the data source property, and you'll see the bind source listed as one of the options. Or we can do it visually by right-clicking the grid. Let's do it visually in this example. We'll just drag our arrow over to the client data set where the star is. And then it will add all the fields. And once the fields are there, we could double-click the grid and we can actually manipulate some of the fields. Suppose I want the ID field to be change the title of it, or maybe I want to change the width of the title field, make it bigger. Um, I can change the name field. I can make that bigger as well. And you can, there's all these other properties you can manipulate too. You can at attach uh, validation mass. You can attach con trust and controls. Um, there's an amazing amount of things you can do with this grid. So now that we have this grid already existing, let's run the application. Well, before we run it, let's attach a T-bind navigator. That'll allow us to um, insert records into it and delete records and things like that. So now let's run the, oh, I have to attach this to the bind source. I'll do that to the data source property. And now I can just run the application. So let's run. And now we have our grid. Let's type a few names here. I'll type my name. Post it. Let me add another record. Type my brother's name. Post it. Add another record. Let's type um, some random name, George. And post that. And these all exist in memory. They're not attached to any physical file. And let me close that. You can also add records through code instead of doing it through interacting with the end user. So suppose I want to add 10 records when the form comes up. And to do that, let's use the forms on show event. And I'll go ahead and add 10 records. So I'll make a loop that goes through 10 times. And then I will put the client data set in insert mode. And then I will assign name field. I'll call that name, and then I'll append the string correlated to I. And then I will post that record. Now, we run the application. And I should have all those records in there now. There we go. We have 10 records in our grid. We can scroll through them. Now we can also, suppose we want to do something extra here. Let's, let's enable the sorting for the grid. Let's just show you how you can easily things are manipulated through the grid. Let's go ahead and then enable the title buttons. Let's also enable descending sorting as well. 
And now when I run this application, I have to change those two properties. Now if you click on the title, you can see that it now will sort alphabetically by those two fields. Actually, this one is a more numeric because the sorting is, is going to determine the data type and sort it appropriately. Okay, well that's an intro to how to use the InfoPower Data Grid and getting started. All right.